Good evening. Tonight I'm going to talk about Joseph and the seventh year. Okay, now if we focus down here, this is a scroll of all of biblical chronology. Get a wide shot of the whole rack. This is a scroll of all of biblical chronology right here. Okay, and we're going to talk about one little part of it. We're going to talk about Joseph and the seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine. All right? Okay. God told Joseph, actually he told Pharaoh in a dream, and then Joseph interpreted the dream, that there would be seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. Seven, seven. And then after the seventh year of famine, he returned the land, he returned the land to the Egyptians. For a price. Okay, what we want to know here is do these seven years of plenty and seven years of famine have anything to do with the sabbatical year institution of Israel? All right, and we'll now explain what the sabbatical year is. The word Shabbat, okay, and sabbatical years are called Shabbat, okay, means rest or to cease, or a cessation. Every seventh year you would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So every seventh year was a year of rest. So the farmers were allowed to plant one, two, three, four, five, six years, and in the seventh year they were not to sow or reap. Okay? And then the cycle would repeat again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six, seven, and the seventh year, they would not sow or reap crops, and God promised to give a double crop in the sixth year, so there would be enough food for the seventh year. Okay. Besides resting in the seventh year, all debts, all debts were to be canceled. So every seventh year in Israel, there was a debt cancellation. Okay? Now what we want to know is, when God said that there would be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine in a dream to Pharaoh that Joseph interpreted, do these seven years, if you actually work out the biblical chronology, do these correspond to what we would call a sabbatical period? Okay, a sabbatical period is seven years. A sabbatical period is seven years. Okay, we know that we can go back to Adam. Okay, Adam lived 930 years. Okay, and then his son was named Seth, Enosh, and so on. We come to Noah. We can keep going. We can come to Terah. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The scripture gives the ages of all of these people from the creation of the world and also gives the age at which they had a son, except for Noah. But we have other data in scripture that will allow us to figure out the answer of exactly how many years transpired. Okay, Terah also is an exception. But we have other data to tell us how old Abraham was when he was born. Alright? Now, so it turns out, if you start at the creation of the world and you count seven years, seven, 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 and you keep going and you keep going and you keep going, and you compute up to Joseph, and the seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine, it so happens that the seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine correspond exactly to the sabbatical periods. Okay, let's zoom in on the scroll here. Okay. Okay, this first column over here, you can zoom in wherever the pointer is going. This is years BC. 
The second green column here is the year of the world, counting from one. Year one being creation. Okay, we see here, this is the year 2290. All right. The next column marks the seventh year, again counting from creation. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the seventh year is shaded red. All right. Okay, so now if we come over here, focus on this box, years of plenty, fall to fall. Okay, the seventh year was an agricultural year, and the agricultural year was on a fall to fall basis. Okay, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and we line that up here, right there. The first year of plenty starts right at the end of the previous sabbatical year, which is seven over there. I'm covering up year number one in that yellow column, and then the red year is the sabbatical year. And then we drop down here to the seventh year, and we see that the seventh year of plenty here corresponds to the seventh year over in the left-hand column right over here. Okay, and then this shaded gray column here is the seven years of famine with the seventh year colored red. Okay, when we pop over here, you see that this is the seventh year in the sabbatical period. Okay, now there's one other institution I need to talk about. It's called the Jubilee. Okay, and what happened in the Jub the way the Jubilee was figured was that you would count off seven sabbatical periods, seven years, seven times, and so on. Okay, and then after the seventh sabbatical period, this would be the seventh sabbatical period, you had a year of Jubilee. Now what happened was that a farmer or a landowner could rent his land up to the year of Jubilee. And then in the year of Jubilee, all land returned to the original owners. You couldn't sell the land permanently. It had to return in the Jubilee to its original owner. Okay, now if we focus in on the chart here, right down here, this gold year right here, right after this sabbatical year here, Actually, if you look in this column right here, you'll see 49 on the second, seventh sabbatical year. That's because that's the 49th year of the cycle. And if you focus on the gold column, that's the Jubilee. Okay, when we pan over here to the end of the seven years of famine, we see that a year of Jubilee follows the seventh year of famine. Okay, now, I'm not going to go into all the details on the chronology here. The chronology actually is in online at World Wide Web, TorahTimes.org, okay? And you can see this in the charts on the website. You can look up the details and um, you'll see that it's accurate. What I'm going to show is why this is significant. If you work these sabbatical years and jubilees down to the Exodus and Israel's entry into the land, you'll find that the count begins when they enter the land, anew. It, it actually synchronizes from creation to Joseph to when they enter the land. Okay, it synchronizes. Okay. Now Joseph, Joseph is a type of Messiah, a type of Yeshua. By type we mean an illustration, a biblical illustration of the Messiah. Okay. So, Joseph corresponds to Yeshua. Now, in Hebrew, this would be Yosef, but I, I'm going to use the regular names for this, okay? All right, Joseph was sold into slavery in Egypt. Okay, and you can recall the passage, Out of Egypt I Call My Son, from Hosea. And also, there's a passage in Number and Balaam's vision about that. Okay, Joseph took the guise of an Egyptian, okay, all right, and even though Yeshua is a Jew, to most people in the world, he takes the guise of a Gentile, okay.
okay, in English, Jesus. By the way, that's not derived from any pagan word, okay? That is a myth. Just a mispronunciation. Okay, down here in the year of Jubilee, okay, after the seventh year of the famine, Joseph returned the land to the Egyptians, okay? And this is what happened. The Egyptians sold their land to Joseph to obtain money to buy food during the seven years of famine. In the year of Jubilee, Joseph returned the land of people in exchange for a promise to pay their Lord two tithes on the land. The priests did not have to pay the tax. Once again, the typology of redemption follows a Jubilee cycle. Joseph is a type of Messiah who saves his people. Likewise, Yeshua returns in the year of Jubilee. This historical example is a prototypical prototype of legislation for the land rental contracts and tithes in the Torah. Okay, focus on me. Now you probably heard that I said that Yeshua returns in the year of Jubilee. And you'll understand why this is significant. Here's the year of Jubilee. Okay, now the year of Jubilee began on the first day of the seventh month. Okay. On the tenth day of the seventh month, that's Yom Kippur. Yom, Yom Kippur. Okay. This is when the great trumpet Shofar Shofar Gadol, okay, or Hashafar Gadol, the great trumpet was blown, announcing the year of Jubilee, when everyone was to return to their own land. Okay? This trumpet is also known as the last trumpet. Okay, it's last in a complete cycle of seven sabbatical periods and then a Jubilee. And then the cycle starts over again to seven sabbatical years and a Jubilee. So, in every Jubilee year we have a last trumpet before the cycle begins again. Okay, and Yeshua referred to his coming in Matthew 24, okay, with a great trumpet. Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 56 referred to it as a great trumpet. Okay, now this scroll here is in book form, okay, and you can find this book at World Wide Web, TorahTimes.org. It has inside the book it has all the charts of biblical chronology. Okay, it has everything in here I showed you about um, the year of Jubilee and the sabbatical year and Joseph and the seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine. It has a major section at the start explaining the chronology step by step. Okay, I intend, I will ha be having more lessons of different parts of the chronology. Obviously this is a vast subject of extreme complexity and it will take many little bits, line upon line, precept upon precept, to establish what it's all about. Thank you for listening.